Hey guys, my name is David. Welcome to Fearless TV. We're so excited you've joined us today. I know this message is going to impact you in such a powerful way. If you've been watching our previous messages or even today, you're just positively impacted or really moved by this message. We encourage you to share it with a friend. Put it on your Facebook, your Instagram story. We want to get the word out about what God is doing through Fearless here in LA. Or if you're saying, hey, how do I further partner with the mission of what Fearless is doing, what God is really doing through our church, in downtown LA, reaching these, these people who don't know Jesus, we have our Fearless Partnerships. It's basically just a group of people who are giving monthly, whether a part of our church or your state's away, and you're just saying, I want to sow into what God is doing. You can give monthly to the vision of Fearless. You can go to fearlessla.com, click on the giving link. There's a whole description in there. I encourage you read about it, pray on it, and just be obedient to the voice of God as He speaks to you. Other than that, check out this amazing message from our pastor. We love you guys. We'll see you soon. Well, uh, if you are new here, we're on a, um, I would guess I would just call this a collection, a collection of thoughts, a collection of um, passionate moments uh, called family values. And we're talking about this because, you know, you have a lot of options in your life. You have a set amount of time for your life, and then you have life. You know, you can do this, you can do that. Anybody been in the candy store of life, and it's hard to choose those with four majors, raise your hand. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's hard to choose. It's, it's, or even dating or friends or, and someone said, woo, I heard that. Dating, yes. But it's hard to choose. There's just so many. I just don't know who to choose. That's what happened with me, you know? <laughs> no way, man. I saw her and I was like, you need to choose me. Praise God. And I'll do whatever it takes. And uh, I dressed in Abercrombie for four years, and then I was just like, that's not me, but I'm, I'm so glad I got you. Praise God. <laughs> My wife likes this short, spiky hair. No, doesn't like that. She likes this rebel look that I got, you know. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> we have so many things, so many uh, aspirations, so, and only so, many, so much time to do. In fact, that's where the stress comes, right? The, the anxiety comes as you're getting older, and you look in the mirror, and you're like, I'm 25. I'm like ancient. I'm like, dude, you are just a kid. But no matter what age you're at, no matter what stage you're at, it's like, I, I can't do enough. What, what do I need to do? Where do I need to put my time? And where do I need to put my effort? And then it's so stressful, so overwhelming. It's just like, dude, turn on Netflix. Like, I don't even know. What, I can't even choose. I'm overwhelmed. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a life a lot easier. We're going to make it a lot clearer because we're going to get some values we're going to call them family values because uh, these are not, this is not a contract. This is a covenant. And, and family is a covenant. What's the difference? A contract is the thing you do at the end of a wedding, right? Most weddings that I do, I, I accidentally forget to do that part where you have to sign the little contract and the government goes, you two are married, you get less taxes, and you're legally married. And I always forget. So I say, please remind me. Because to me, the most important part is not the government contract that tells each other where we're going to split up and what happens when we split up. The most important thing to me is, is, is the, the community uh, covenant that happens. I will, I, will, I will love you. I promise. And then now we're reading our own vows and we're saying, this is from my heart. I promise to, to care for you and love you. And, and, and this is what every married couple, when they go to weddings, they're like, man, this is spicing up our marriage because love is in the atmosphere. Every time after me and my wife go to a wedding, we make out afterwards. Every time <laughs> our love is turned up because when love gets in the atmosphere, it sparks love in you. And, and, and this, is a, this is a love relationship we have with God. And this is a family that we have with God. And so we're saying, God, look, give us some family values. A value is something that holds weight, you know? That holds weight with me. You know anybody in your life that when they say something, you listen? You're like, man, that person. A lot of people talk. But, but when they talk, it holds weight with me. Let's, let's get some values in our life that can hold some weight with us. And that can steady us in the waves and in the sea and in the wildness of this life. And this is going to be our hope. This is gonna, we're saying, hey, if we, we will live out these things, these, these covenants with the Lord, uh, then, then we're going to see a life that changes the world. We're going to see a life that was worth living. We're going to see a life that he was worth dying for for my life. And let me say this. There is no secular and sacred. Like, you know, people, this happened in the 90s. You know, we're, we're burning CDs and we're like, oh, I heard demons scream. No, that was the plastic melting uh, from the CD. 
Uh, there was no demon screaming in the music. It was the plastic. <laughs> and if you were told that, I'm sorry to mess up your theology because CDs don't have a soul. Secular and sacred. There is so so we, we teach that and then we think, okay, well, what I do out here is not for the Lord. And what I do in here is, so we create religious Christians that put on a mask once a week and pretend, you know, I'll wear like a Ramon shirt and people are like, oh, I can't believe the pastor wore a Ramon shirt. I'm like, well, I have to wear clothes. That is a good start to being the pastor. Uh, but the shirt doesn't have Jesus or not have Jesus in it. Right? It, it, it's, it's, it's not about what I do. It's really about why I do it. So I don't care if you're out there and you're, you, you, you are a business owner. I don't, I don't care if you're, you, you, you know, you own five businesses or you're dreaming of one. I don't care if you work at a restaurant or you work at the Cosmopolitan Hotel. I don't care what you do, but what I care about is why you do it. And so if we can catch that, that, that it's not about what I do, it's about with what heart and with what passion and with what purpose I do it. Why am I alive? I'm not, look, I'm not just here to be a minister for you. I'm here to raise up ministers in you. Because you are a minister in your field of work. He Heather's right back there, beautiful Heather. Uh, or we call her Royce is her band name. And she was just out in New York and all kinds of cool places. And uh, she looks like she's having a lot of fun. I'm trying to try out for being like an acoustic guitar player or a cowbell player or anything really that you would have me go on your jet and go out there and pr praise the Lord. And, um, and so I'm texting her on her trip or DMing her in, on Instagram. Hey, Heather, I'm praying for you. Uh, I know it's got to be tough uh, being the leader of just so much and caring so much. I'm praying for you. Just know you got someone praying for you. She's saying, Pastor, thank you so much. And, I, and I'm sure in her head she's like, well, it's, it's cool that he cares about something I'm not doing for the church. Because she's like, wow, thank you, Pastor. But if I told her, hey, thank you for running DNA booths, she, she wouldn't think twice about it. She'd go, oh, of course he's telling me thank you. He, he cares about that. No, no. God cares about everything you do. Because everything you do, if you do it for the why, the right why, it is ministry unto the Lord. This is why you can be out there on the road on a tour and carry yourself like you do on Sunday. Because this is church. Because I am the church. Okay, so we're, we're going to carry some family values. And it's going to help us know which doors to walk through and which doors not to walk through. It's going to help us to know which doors are my doors and which ones aren't my home. You know, I'm walking through my apartment, right? And people just leave their door open. And they'll just go get the mail. It's like a safe place, I guess, in the arts district. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. And people just leave it open. Can you imagine if one day, because there was an open door, I just walked in, sat down at the table, opened up the fridge, got some food out, started cooking, and the person petting the dog, you know, laying in the bed. And then someone comes in like, what the... Stink, are you doing right here? It might be, you know, fill in the blanks. Depends on who, what they're, what's going on in their mouth, right? And, you know, what are you doing? I'm like, I, the door was open, so I took took advantage of it. I made it my house. Person would be like, this isn't your home. Just because the door was open doesn't mean you need to walk through it. Look, let me let me tell you this, lady. Every guy that hollers at you ain't your husband. He's like, wow, you look beautiful. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I am beautifully and wonderfully made. That's what the Lord told me. Thank you for reading that. Right? That doesn't mean we're going on a date. We're going to get married because you said hi to me. Not every door, open door is my door. Not every open job is my job. Look, you, you're like, man, I'm getting committed. I'm going after God. I'm going to get plugged in. And then you get a job that takes you out. You're like, well, I guess the Lord changed his mind. I guess that's what I'm supposed to do. No, no. The Lord didn't change his mind. Every door is not my door. Every, every open, just because it's open doesn't mean, and here's the other thing, just because it's closed doesn't mean it's not mine. Because the Bible says, knock and the door will be open. How, how would you knock if the door's already open? There are some doors you have to knock on and some doors you have to walk past. So how do we know the difference? We get some family values that says, okay, is this mine? Here's what I value. Here's what's important to me. Right? Look, husbands, you get a job. You're working overtime. You're working triple time. Why? To provide for your family, to be loving to your family, to care for your family. Ultimately, if the job takes you so far away from your family, 
that even though you're providing for them, you're not able to be there with them, then, you're, then the job opposed your value. Because your value is not just providing, it's being present. So, you, so just because it's open doesn't mean it's yours. So we have to get some people that are bold enough to go, I'm okay with not every door being mine. You know why? Because I want my door. I want my house. Here's what I'm, t- I'm not trying to take away your front. I'm trying to tell you, if you go get in your house, if you go sit in your room, you will be blown away at what God has for you. Come on, bypass on that little apartment that's not yours. Bypass on that other thing that's not yours and walk into the room that God has for you. We're going to take some family values. So we've been talking about these. One of the greatest family values in the original church, and all 10 of these are from the first church, and they're in the Bible. And so we're going to take these from the Bible and from the first church. The one we're focusing in on today is, goes with this. It's family is our commitment. It's going to be our commitment to be family. It's a part of, part of our value system. Part, at the moment, whatever we're doing takes away from that, we're stopping that door and saying, God, no, nope, that's not for me. My value My supreme value is that family is going to be a commitment to me. Why? Because it was a commitment to you. Come on, can we look at this? The the first church was was full of people that were in family together. Look at at this in in, uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 42. It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. In other words, they went to church. They were around the word. They, they, They do what you're doing here today. Come on, I'm talking to the choir. And to the fellowship. It says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to. So just as much as they devoted themselves to Sunday and the word, they also devoted themselves to community and fellowship, sharing life together. Why? Because they were a family. To the breaking of bread, God is into food. God's a foodie. They were into eating together, to prayer Food always leads to prayer. Sometimes we want prayer, to lead, we want prayer but we, we, the, we bypass the food. We, we want deep intimacy, but we bypass the shallow moments. Look, and here at this church, we, we start shallow, and we believe for deep. Come on, stop. go to a dinner party this week. Go, 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 get, go get involved. Go find one in your area. Start shallow. Hey, we're doing a, a planned dinner from our church. No one really maybe wanted me here. I'm just in their zip code. And I happen to get an invite to this. Well, you can get mad about that. And you can be like, this is cold. Or you can say, no, we're going to start shallow. But ultimately, we're believing for deep. I'm praying that I'll have a deep conversation at this dinner party that will lead to an actual uncalculated, unplanned dinner. Or maybe for some of you single people, it could lead to a marriage. Wow, I'm just saying. That's a good reason to go to a dinner party right there. <laughs> Every day, they continue to meet together in the temple courts And they broke bread in their homes, and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts. They committed. Commitment means I'm going to pursue your best interests, not because I feel like it, but because I made a decision to. Commitment means I'm going to pursue the best interests of being together, not because I feel like it, because tomorrow you're not going to feel like it. Wednesday, all hell's going to break loose. It's going to be dinner party night, and you're like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, they won't even miss me if I'm gone. And you say, you know what? I committed to being family. I committed to being at stuff. At Thanksgiving dinner, if my mom plans a whole event and, uh, you know, my sisters are there and everyone's there and it's all exciting and she's got everything ready and I'm like, Mom, hey, we'd love to come, but, you know, just kind of busy with stuff, life. And you know what my mom would say? She'd like, get your butt over here now, right? Because family is a big deal. It's a big deal in our culture and it's a big deal with heaven. It's a big deal to God. Look, family is a big, it's a big deal that I don't just make it, I make it together. Look, your destiny is bigger than you. If it's only as big as you, then it's not very big. Your dream is bigger than you. If it's only as big as you, it's not a God dream. 
A God dream always includes others. A God dream always includes family. Look, I can't just believe for this church to grow and just be Jeremy. I have to believe in family. I have to believe in people. I have to empower people. I have to hope for them to be the best because if they don't make it, I don't make it. We're going to make it, but we're going to make it together. We're, we're going to get to where God's called, not to stand up with a trophy, but to do the call of God on our life. Be awesome to have that trophy, but it'd be awesome to have the trophy and have a family cheering me on that was there before I made it, that was there before I was somebody, that loved me while I was a Starbucks barista, that believed that I had a call of God on my life before anybody saw the call. I want some people that will cheer me on when no one sees me because that's the real deal. Man, I want some people in my life like that, and I want to be those kind of people to others. You know, I'm, care I'm careful to get a 10-year dream for this church. Because I started that, and then I started getting caught up and in love with the 10 years. In 10 years, I'll be happy. And God's like, why can't you be happy now? I'm like, because I don't have what I'll have in 10 years. I don't have the people. I don't have the resources. I don't have the buildings. And God said, then stop dreaming about 10 years. Stop living in today. Be here right now. Love on the people in front of you. Love on the people that came. Stop worrying about the people that didn't. Love on the people that are there and say yes to the call. Stop worrying about the people that left. And pour into them. Give them love. And when you feel loved, you're going to tell people about it. I'm not going to have to tell you to invite anyone to this church. If I love you right, you will invite people. Why? Because you know someone looking for love. I'm careful to get a 10-year plan because I just need a now plan. I need a right here, right now. God, help me to love my life. Help me to love the people. In front. Help me to enjoy this journey. Help me to understand the why and the what. Give me some passion to know everything in my life is spiritual. You have a plan for every moment. I don't have to fear. God, I have a family backing me up. When I get sick, I have a family praying for me. When I go through stuff, I have a family that believes with me. Come on. They're not expecting me to be superhuman. They're expecting me to be family. What you need to know about family is family is messy messy it's ugly it's dirty it's a mess unless you are one of those perfect families you never had a family meeting you've never been through some family drama you've never had a family feud oh but we don't want church to be like that well, but iron sharpening iron looks like that. It's sparks flying. It's disagreements. But ultimately, we have the same father. And if we have the same father, we're a part of the same family. And God's heart is for us to get along. But to get along, we have to be committed to it. We have to say, I'm making a covenant with this. I'm going to be a part of this thing. Look, look up here, I, I brought some pots. Not that kind of pot. Don't get worried. This this kind of pot. <laughs> I know it's legal, but not here, okay? Amen. Praise God. <laughs> and so we show up to church in our pots. We got our leaves. No fruit, because fruit needs larger roots. We have, we, we're protected. We're here sitting next to someone, but thank God I got this wall up, because if you really got in, you would see that I'm not green below the surface. It's dirty down there. There's no leaves down there. There's no fruit down there. There's just roots, and they're all twisted up, and they need some water. But I'm just here, and I want you to know I'm doing really great. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing awesome. As long as I get water twice a day and sit next to the shelf in the sun, I'm doing okay. Please don't put me in any storms because in storms I blow over. But, and some of my soil falls out, and then I'm barely making it. I've had a lot of soil dumped out in the last few years, and I'm barely here. So please don't ask me any deep questions. I'll give you me, but just the potted me. I'll come to church like this, but I'm going to leave quick. Because if you try to start digging down in that thing, you may discover I'm not perfect. And I might discover you're not perfect. And then my standards of who you are will be lowered. And I need to see you pastor as God because it's the only way I get through it and then the moment someone's a human and they pull their roots out we're like oh God I can't believe you have roots I'm perfect well because you're potted but it, but it, so so how, how's that working so if it doesn't work in church it's not going to work in marriage 
If it doesn't work in church, it's not going to work in friendships. I have lots of friends. Ever had lots of friends but no deep ones? No real ones? You know why? Because everywhere you go, you're potted. Everywhere you go, you're in your container. Well, I'm in there because someone hurt me last time. I'm in there because I got planted and I got hurt and I got wounded. And they didn't share the water in that soil. And so I got potted because I'm looking for a healthy place to plant myself. Well, welcome. You have a healthy place. Come out of your pot because God wants to see growth in your life. This is not the Christian life of safety. It's the Christian life of power. And God wants to produce power in your life and fruit that remains in your life but you got to get out of the pot you guys okay with this i'm out here you got some dead parts it's okay we're getting we're, we're going deep we're getting in together because <laughs> guess what i got some too let's get in the manure together Let's get in the dirt to get, let's get hidden together and let's let our father water us. Let's let him sustain us. And when the storm comes and the rain comes, they won't just be susceptible to your roots. I'm going to connect with you. I'm going to hold you down. I'm going to hold you down through prayer and fasting and belief. Or you can stay potted. But as soon as the wind comes, as soon as the rain comes, because with your calling, the devil is not okay. You think he's just going to let you walk up into the business world and be the CEO that God wants you to be? You think he's okay with that? You think the youth team, the, the devil's stoked about us being on four campuses? That's why we're stuck on one right now. Because there's a storm. Good thing we're not potted. Good thing we're not fair day. Good thing we're not house plants. Good thing God has called us to greater things. Good thing we're ready to get our roots up. Good thing we're ready to get involved together. Good thing we're ready to do more than just go to church together. We're ready to be the church together. We're the community who are called fearless. When people look at us, they go, that's the fearless family. Oh, that's the wild group. They'll show up unannounced and they'll start believing for wild things. Come on. Do we have any wild people in the house? Any fearless family? I think we'll just keep this unpotted plant in the church for the rest of the time. We just put it there just to remind you, take your pots off. Come in here unprotected and say, God, watch, do you do something in my life? This plant could only grow as big as its pot will allow it to. But you have unlimited potential. You have unlimited power. Paul said it this way. It's not a kingdom of talk. It's a kingdom of power. And power comes... Through relationship. I, I want, I want to uh, read you another part and then I'll, I'll, I'll close this thought. Um, Romans 12.10. Love each other with genuine affection. Take delight in honoring each other. You know, honor is the only thing you can't put on yourself normally. It's abnormal to put honor on yourself. Hey, I'm really good at stuff. I'm the man. Bow down. Right? <laughs> Honor is the only thing you can't put on yourself. It's weird when you put it on yourself. It's called pride. Honor is the only thing someone else has to put on you. Take great delight that you get to honor each other. How can you do that? Talk well of them. Look for good things in their life. Stop digging up their past. Start digging up their future. Come on, anybody can dig up their past. But when you dig it up, it just stinks. And it's dead because Christ already took care of it. Stop making a memorial to their past. Stop digging up dead bones. That's weird and creepy. Come on, let's dig up life on it. Look at someone and start believing, man, what could God do in their life? I know what is happening now, but that's not where they're going to end up. That's just where they started. Come on, take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy. But work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. You know, when you love each other, we got to stop being lazy loving each other. we got to stop going, man, I just don't feel like it. No, no, this is going to be some hard work. I'm in for the hard work. I'm in for the hard work of believing that this family member is going to make it in Jesus' name. 1 Peter 4.10, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve yourself. Use them well to be good at something. Use them well to serve each other. 
Wow, what gifts do you have? Some of you have the gift of hospitality. Some of you have the gift of love. You know, you just, you know, man, you just have a gift of joy. People go, wow, when you're here, you just use that. How can I use this gift I have? Dave has a gift of encouragement. After, after every sermon, Dave's like, Pastor, whoo, that was the best sermon I've ever heard. He'll do Instagrams about it. He'll, you know, and I'm not fishing for compliments. I'm just saying, Dave has the gift of encouragement. And I'm sure that Dave just doesn't do that with me. You know what Dave does? He uses that gift to give me love. He uses that gift. This is what, exactly what God's talking. He said, look, I've given you all a variety of gifts. You don't all have the same gift. Use it to serve one another. You're going, how can I? You're not just thinking, how can I serve this church? You're thinking, how can I serve this church? How can I bless someone with my gift? What gifts do I have? This is why you got to stop beating yourself up that you have no gifts. This is what the devil looks. I have nothing to offer. I have nothing to offer. So then what do you do? You offer nothing. Because you've believed a lie. If you believe a lie, it will become your truth. But you have something to offer this family. You have something to bring to the table. I don't know what it is, but you need to start asking the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, reveal that to me so I can serve this family that I'm committed to. Family's my commitment. So here's Jesus. Jesus comes. And what was Jesus' purpose? Jesus came. We can say some things, right? He came. Die on the cross. Take away our sins. Now, now, I know I'm saying that funny. I'm not, I'm not making light of that because those are big deals. Came to heal the sick, save the lost. But I, can I tell you this today? All of those things that Jesus did were subpoints, big subpoints, huge subpoints, changed my life subpoints, but they were subpoints to the real main point of why Jesus came. Because over and over again, in Jesus, we can see perfect theology or how we can think about the Bible, his word, what we can believe. We can see perfect theology. If you don't see it in Jesus, it's not in the Bible. It might be in the Bible, but you ain't seen it right. Because in Jesus, God brought the second Adam to show us how to live out his word, who was the word. If you can read it in Jesus' life, it's what you should be reading. It's what you should be pouring. So in Jesus, we, if you live like Jesus, you will, you will live a great life. In Jesus, we see perfect theology. In Jesus, who put the main point of why he came to be here was not to die on the cross, was not to smash sin, was not to heal the sick, was not to save the lost, was not to turn water into wine, was, uh, thank God for that, was not, was not to, to, to multiply the bread, thank God for the bread, was not to just hang out. The reason why Jesus came, the main point of why he came is to reveal to an orphan planet the Father's heart. To reveal to an orphan planet the Father's heart. And with revealing the Father's heart, he did those things. He saved the lost. He healed the sick. He, he, he bought back people that were far from him. He, he reached out to the prostitute. Why? Because she was a daughter. I can't believe you're hanging out with the prostitutes. She's like, why not? I'm here to reveal the Father's heart. And that's his daughter. It doesn't matter what my daughter's done. It doesn't take away the fact she's my daughter. Jesus wasn't, wasn't verifying her sin. He was verifying his love. And Jesus came to reveal the Father. So that's why he kept saying, you know, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father which are in heaven. He was teaching them about what the Father sees in them. He, he was teaching orphans. Why? Because, yes, we're all looking for love, but the greatest thing we're looking for is a Father's love. Jesus came to fill the vacuum of a father's love. We were orphans. We were lost in our sin. We were lost in our shame. We had no purpose and no destiny. And Jesus comes and goes, hey, I'm the first of many brothers. And I came to reveal to you, we have a father in heaven who's so in love with you. He wants you to know he has a purpose for you, a destiny for you. He and he goes, I'm leaving, but I'm, I'm just going back with the father because I, I'm helping him with the, with the many rooms in my father's house. There are many rooms, and he, he has one for you. He's preparing a place for you. Come on. This life is not about now. It's about the father sees you. He loves you. It's the feeding of the 5,000. That's why the Jesus fed the 5,000, not because they were hungry, because they were the father's kids. It's why he, he ministered to the prostitutes. It's why he healed the arm. It's why he opened blind eyes. Not because he was trying to do miracles. Because he was revealing the Father. 
You know what we're here to do on this earth? We're here to reveal the Father's heart to a bunch of his kids. This is why you should be able to walk out the room and someone blows smoke in your face. They curse up a storm and you say, I can't wait to tell you the Father loves you. It's not about what you do or what you don't do or what you did. He loves you. You are his and he's yours. And if we have the same father, we're brothers and sisters. Jesus, he's ministering at a party. I love that. He always ministers at parties. Ministering at a party and the house gets so full. And Jesus' mom shows up and she goes, hell, let, let Jesus know his mom and his brothers are here. And Jesus turns to the person and he said, who is my mother and brother? It's a weird question. He's like, you don't know? <laughs> She's here. God looks like you. Name's Mary. St. Mary. You don't you know who she is? Jesus didn't forget who his mom was. He was trying to reveal to us how powerful he sees this family. It's not kind of like a family. Like, hey, we're kind of like brothers. No, no, we are. Because Jesus said, who are my mother and brother? And, he, and then he turned to the servant because the servant didn't know how to answer that. And he said, my mother and brothers are these. See this, see this Peter right here who's still working it out? He's my brother. See, see John over here? <laughs> he's got to love it. He's, he's my brother too. See Zacchaeus? He's a mess. He's wealthy, but I don't, I don't love him because of that. I love him because he's my brother. He, th these are my mothers and brothers. And he says, those who do the Father's will. The, in other words, those who receive his love, walk in that truth, are my mothers and brothers. He, he said, look, even further in Timothy, Paul goes on to tell Timothy. He said, in your house, in the spiritual house, if you have an elder in the church, treat him like a, a mother. An uh, elder woman in the church, treat her like a mother. If you have an elder father in the church, treat him like a father. If you have younger people, treat them like sons and daughters. Look, look we, we don't know how to disciple. We don't know how to, how do I disciple someone? I can't even disciple myself. You know how you disciple others? You look at them like family. How do you teach your younger brother how to hit a baseball? I don't know. You just figure it out. YouTube it. Do whatever you got to do. But this is my brother. No one else is coming to teach him how to hit the ball. I got, if, if, when, he, if when he gets older, 26, he can go, my brother never taught me. No, I'm going to teach him because he's mine. He's a mess. He can't swing. He's, he's having a, str a struggle, but I'm going to make sure. Son, you're going son, you're going to hit the ball harder than anybody else. Why? Because I'm not, I'm not ditching out on this. I'm going to figure this out. How do we disciple each other? Like brothers and sisters, like sons and daughters, like mothers and fathers. Come on. We need some mothers and fathers to rise up in the church again. You know, someone came to our church a while back, and they looked around. They go, man. I don't know if I belong here. I said, why, why not? Did you, I loved it. I mean, the service was awesome. The sermon was great. Worship was incredible. I loved the free gift. But I just don't know if I belong here. I said, why? They said, no one here looks like me. I said, well, there's a lot of Hispanics here. He said, no, not my race, my age. And I said, we need you. I said, I only have one dad. I have two sisters, one dad. Man, I'm thankful that my dad's around. I'm thankful he's in my... I said, we need some mothers and we need some fathers. We, we don't just need sons and daughters. We don't just need a church of young adults because that's not the church of Jesus Christ. If people say, man, are you trying to do a young adult church? No, I'm trying to do the church. I keep getting more young adults. I don't know how to not get young adults. I try to tell you don't come, but you come anyways. <laughs> right? We have a lot of young adults, praise God. And we need some mothers and fathers. Why to have Lyric come up and pray? Because we need some children. We need a whole bunch of children. We need a family. The church is supposed to look like a family. This is the family of God. How do I, what do I do here? Be a father. Do you know, look, maybe you're like, man, I don't know how to be a father. Good thing we don't have to act like our dad. How do we be a father? We start reading his love letter over us. And we find out how he loves us. And then we just reflect that. You know, it helps so much, even with my staff or my team. You know, there's, no matter how, how awesome people are, there's always a conflict, right? I mean, just life is going to be conflict. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. I'm frustrated by this. You know, I used to just deal with it like an employee. You know what I do now? I go, what if this was brave? I have so much grace on brave. I mean, my kid... He's a spitball. He's going to be a pastor one day. He's going to preach the gospel to thousands, millions. I tell him that every day. And he goes, Dad, can I be a chef too? I can be, uh, you can be a chef, baby. But we're the Johnsons. Back in the day, the Smiths, they used to be metal Smiths. And the Johnsons, we're preachers. 
You're going to preach the gospel. I don't know how you're going to do it. You may make movies. You may cook food. You may do whatever. But you're going to preach the gospel wherever you are. I tell them that every day. Every day you're going to preach the gospel. And I don't, I don't feel ashamed of that. I'm not afraid of that because I'm going to raise up preachers in my house. That's what my daughter said. I'm going to be a pastor. I said, okay, go. go. Thank God she changed from a missionary to a pastor. I was like, missionary, I'm not. Right? She doesn't have to, but I'm going to, I'm going to prophesy that over her life. I'm going to prophesy over his life. And I'm going to believe in them more than if anybody else believes in my kids more than me. There's something wrong with that. I'm going to believe in them more than I'm going to, I'm, they're going to get. I'm going to be like, you only got one more chance. Okay, you got two. Oh, three. Okay, come on. If you do it one more time, there's so much grace. I am rich in grace for my kids. How come we can't be rich in grace for each other? Because we're not seeing it right. I'm rich in grace for my family. I may be frustrated with my mom, but you better not talk about my mama. Right? It's okay to be frustrated with your family. But it's not okay to give up on them. I'm not giving up on you. Come on, there's a great call in your life. There's, how many chances? There, there's unlimited. I don't, there's so much grace. It's crazy grace. Grace is opposed to earning, but it's not opposed to effort. There's unlimited grace. But come on, let's meet it with some effort. Let's not meet it with earning. I can't earn this, but I can apply myself. I can give it my all. I can't say, God, I, I want to be, be form and power. The, the, the Bible is clear that Jesus, when he came, he was mad at the people that had the form without the power. Or those that try to use the power without the form. I want to look like Jesus, and I want to walk like him. I want to. I want to look like Jesus, and I want to walk. I want to have the. I want to have the form of godliness on the outside, and I want to have the power of godliness on the inside. I went. I went to the store, uh, Whole Foods, three sixty five, and I got some steak. Who likes steak? Anybody like steak? Grass fed. Ben, we just take that top off. I got some steak. Two different kinds for you. One is a Sweet Earth Enlightened Foods Chipotle style Seton. Um, it's strips of um, quinoa mixed with some chickpeas and some soy sauce. There's no meat in it, but it's. Uh, you're not vegan? No, okay. So maybe a pass on that one. Um, that has the form of meat, but it doesn't have the power of it. Tastes the same, kind of. If you close your eyes, eat quick, swallow fast. Has kind of the same texture, a little bit rubbery, but. <laughs> or we have this other one, door number two. You'll need this, though. Okay. I know it's a mini fork, but you don't, have to, you don't need a knife because it's puree. Uh, puree, I'm sorry, not puree. <laughs> That's water. It's 100% grass-fed filet with organic kale and sweet potatoes. This has the power. It's just missing the form. It's the same thing. It's just in a different form. Is it not? You don't want any more? You're good. Okay. And that's what the world says to us. I'm good. We got the power of God. Miracles, signs, wonders. Where's the form? The body. Where's the form? The church. I don't need church. I just need God. Just me and God. Me and God. We'll do Jesus by ourselves. I got the power. You don't have the form. Same ingredients. It's not the way I intended it and the world goes ah I'm good with that it sounds more like a you and yourself cult we got the form we show up on Sunday everyone's perfect we're in our pots where's the power in that there is none there's safety in my pot in myself Where's the sparks flying? Where's the discipleship? Where's the growth? Where's the family? Where's the love beyond each other's?
pain and problem. Oh, we don't have all that. We just have the form. It looks like it, smells like it, kind of tastes like it. And this is getting a big audience. Maybe people watch What the Hell, so they're eating this and they're excited about it. And this is the modern day church. Either it looks like this or it looks like that. I say we go for filet. I say we go all in. I say we put away the form, we put away just the power, and we believe in the form and the power in our life again. I, I say we believe for the real thing. I say we believe for that God could help us love each other and be family, and we can make that commitment, and we can embrace what Jesus came and died to reveal a father to sons and daughters, and that we can actually pray with each other and fast with each other and stand with each other and not look down on each other, but lift each other up and Would you stand to your feet all over this room? I've made a complete mess up here. I am sorry, Academy LA. We will clean it up. Ben, you okay? No, okay. I was about to buy you a steak later. I do love you. Thank you, because you knew it was coming, and you were willing. And you know what? Ben just gave me that gift. You are a gift to the body, Ben. He's just such a gift. So willing, so humble. Come on, you, you belong here. You, have, you are a child of God. You're his kids. You matter. You matter here. You matter right now. God put us together for a reason. Today, as we're here today, let's just open our heart. You know, we can never open our heart to each other until we first open our heart to him. And many of us have trouble opening our heart to the Father because we have abandoned, skewed, messed up relationships with fathers. No wonder why the devil attacks fathers. No wonder why it's so tough to be a father. Why anybody have trouble with a father relationship in their life? Raise your hand. Come on, let's just see every hand. You have you have something going on, and some of you are embarrassed to do it. Let's just raise your hand. Come on, who cares? Come on. So so here's the deal. Your dad's not here. We're not taking a video. We're not trying to put your dad down. It's the devil has been after dads in our society, and he has because as long as he can skew your relationship with your dad, he can skew your relationship with Father God. And today we're just going to say, you know what, God, you're not my dad. You didn't abandon me. You'll never leave me. You'll always love me. You've forgiven me of everything I've ever done. You, you, you died for me on the cross. You believe in my dreams. You have a hope for me. You have a future for me. And I receive that even if I don't feel it, even if I start believing that lie, I'm receiving that right now. Come on, can we do that with God right now? If we get it right with him, we can get it right with each other. If we get it right with him, we can commit to each other. God, we just love you today, God. Come on, right where you're at, just say, God, today, God, restore your relationship with me. God, I want to see you as a father, not as a God far off. But God, I want to receive your blessing. I want to receive your lordship over my life. I want to walk in trust with you. Come on, if you're in a pot, say, God, I'm coming out of my pot. I'm coming out of that pot. God, plant me deep in your household of faith. Plant me deep here, God. I, I spread out my roots. I prepare for any and every storm. God, I'm a part of something, God. I'm a part of your family. God, we receive your life today, Jesus. Thank you for listening. If you have something you need prayer for, we would love to pray for you. Visit fearlessla.com slash fearless tv to fill out a prayer request or to find more information about Fearless LA.